Okay guys, in this video I'm going to show you two ways to generate a ring effect in Unity. So the first way that we're going to look at is using a, um, a mesh along with a gradient like this. And the second way that we're going to look at is using a quad with a material that we make in Shader Rob. And so we're going to make both of these in this video. Um, so let's get started. So we're going to start with this mesh. So to create the mesh, you're going to open Blender. In Blender, you're going to go ahead and click Mesh circle and then you're going to press edit mode e scale in and we're going to just create our mesh here um, now the next thing we need to do is make sure our uvs are set up so what we want is all the uvs to be like this so we've set up our uvs now and we're going to export our mesh so you go fbx export i'm just going to overwrite this one that i had created here and then we're going to import that into unity so we're going to delete the one that we already have Delete that, and we're going to import this ring mesh into Unity. Oh. Unity. So we're going to import this into Unity. So you can see here, now we just have this ring, and it has this lit shader on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new material. We want it to be an additive material. So create a new material. I'm using URP. So you go URP on lit. Change the surface type from opaque to transparent, set it to additive, and we want to render both faces. Then we're going to go ahead and apply that to the mesh. You can see that it's applying it as an additive shader. Now, you can see that there's no sort of gradient occurring here. We can apply it in one of two ways. The first way we can do it is using this gradient node. So if we want to use a gradient node, we can jump into GIMP, create this. 64 by 64 is fine. Try and find the middle here. We're using a foreground to transparent bilinear gradient um, and then we're going to go find the middle drag it down and then we have our gradient so then we go to export it i'll just call it gradients and i'm going to overwrite the gradient that i already have and then export it and then in unity we're going to drag and drop in our new gradient I'll delete this one just to show you so we drag and drop in our new gradient drag and drop in our new gradient. <laughs> and then we have our new gradient here. It looks like that. And then to apply it, we open our material and then we just drag and drop that into the material slot. Now the main problem with this one is that you can see these vertices. Um, so that's not really great or ideal. And um, you can kind of see some striations or lines in the gradient as it fades away from the center. So not really the most ideal. So the other way that we could do this is with a shader graph using this mesh as well. So to do it with a shader graph, we'll just create a new shader graph. And what we want is it to be unlit, transparent, additive, render both faces. And then we can just use the UV. And out of the UV, we want, um, let's see, we want the G channel. And from the G channel, we're going to um, subtract a half. And then we're going to take the absolute value. And then we're going to flip it like that. And then I think we want a smooth step like that. So we'll probably want to saturate it as well. And then we can drag and drop that in. Now we'll just kind of quickly organize this and then save it. And then we'll apply this new shader graph to our material. And you can see that we got rid of those striations, but there's still, it's kind of hard to explain, but that you can still see these like vertices um, due to how the UV coordinates are getting interpolated. So we don't love that. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a quad and we're gonna create something that kind of looks like this. We're gonna add noise to it and we're gonna make it um, change in brightness over time as well. So to do that, I'm gonna recreate this shader graph I'm just going to start from scratch so you can follow along. So to start from scratch, we just go to an unlit shader graph. And we want it to be transparent, additive, render on both faces. <clears throat> we definitely don't want it to um, depth rate and um, we don't want it to cast shadows. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to start off with this polar coordinate. We're going to split it and then we're going to take the 
our channel. So you can see that this is just going away from the center. <clears throat> um, so if we just take this and we plug it in here, you can preview the result onto a quad. We can see how that's gonna look. So it's really not what we want at all. Um, but I'll give you an example of kind of what we're looking to eventually achieve. So if we flip this using one minus and then saturate it, and then plug it into an edge node, we can preview the edge like this. We could probably just go like that. And then flip it like that. Cool. So that's one. And then the second one that we'll do is we'll do like a 0.8. And then we want to subtract the inner circle from the outer circle. So if we apply that now, go ahead and create a new material and apply that to our quad. So you can see here, we just have a quad in the scene. I'll just recreate it. So you right click, go 3D object, quad. And then if we take our quad, rotate it onto its side, and then apply our new material to it, you can see that we have this pixel perfect circle. So that's great. I'm just going to close these guys. And then we'll rotate this guy again back onto his side. So the next thing that we have to do is we actually have to get this gradient going on. So the way that we'll get the gradient is using an SDF node. So to create an SDF node, we can jump into a custom function and open our graph inspector. And then we'll create a custom function with our um, string type. So what we want is we want to get the length of the position minus the radius. So this will be the position and this will be the radius. On position, and that'll be the radius. And then for our out parameter, we'll call this one out. And then what we'll call it is our circle SDF. Let's see what it's complaining about. Perfect. So now if we pipe in our preview node, um, we can visualize our SDF like that. Great. So we're going to use this SDF to draw a circle for ourselves. So if we take that absolute value, you can see that the inside of the SDF is like a value of one and then the outside or negative one and the outside gets to zero as we get to the circle line, this imaginary line where the circle is, and then it increases gradually as we get further away. So what we want to do is we want to use a smooth step so that we can kind of carve out just an area around the circle. To do that, we'll use an x value of 0.2 and a y value of 0. And for the radius, we'll set it to 0.8. That way, we're just barely touching the edge here. So you'll want this number to be equal to, you know, 1 minus this number, like that. So if we take this and apply it here, <clears throat> we can see that we now have a really nice circle. So the next step that we want to do is we want to fade the circle over time. So we can just use a, a time node, plug it into a UV like this, gradient noise, and that's kind of too fast. So maybe we'll lower the scale a little bit and then we can multiply it by the smooth step. Now you can see that this is kind of shimmering with light. And so if we load that up, you can see that it's changing color over time. So that's really cool. And then the final thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add um, sort of like a attenuation to the boundary of this. So it's not just a perfect circle. So to do that, we're gonna use a gradient noise node again, and we're gonna take our time node and we're gonna multiply it. Uh, we're gonna plug it into a tiling and offset. <clears throat> and then we're gonna plug it in here. And for the scale, we can use something like five. Now we're going to take this and we're going to plug it into a remap. Then we're going to take our gradient noise and we're going to remap that as well. Now we want to remap it from 
0 to 1 to something like 0 to 0 0.2. And then we're going to plug this in as the x component of our min-max range. And we're just going to want to make sure that we saturate that too. So now if we save it, we can see we have this really cool sort of wiggly shader that's fading in and out gradually over time. And it looks like maybe we need a saturate here. If I'm not mistaken. Cool. And then to incorporate a color into it, you could just take this and then multiply this one by a color. And to bring the color, you just convert it to a property. So now this will be available. It's better to use an HDR color. And I think we'll want something fun and bright like this orange. And we'll probably want to expose this value. So we'll call this one a float. And we'll default it to 0.2. And I'll pipe it into here like that. And we'll call this one the uh, remap intensity. That should just be a slider. And we can grab this radius as well. Call it 0.8. Convert that to a property as well. We'll call it circle radius and then like I mentioned we just want this one minus for here and then we need to plug this in as well then if we take a look at our output we can go ahead and customize it a little bit very cool we can change the circle radius and we can change the remap intensity. And if we turn on a volume, it'll actually look nice. So just pop on a volume here, turn on post processing, enable bloom and tone mapping. Super cool, right? So that's pretty much it. Um, so that's a circle in basically three ways. So we had our ring with the static uh, gradient, the ring with the procedural shader, and then the this final ring with you know this really nice procedural uh, texture going on it. Cool. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more um, Unity shader tutorials. See ya.